Welcome to Vegan Picks and to Bansko, Bulgaria. everyone and welcome back to Vegan Picks. Thank you so much for stopping by on this video all about being vegan whilst on a ski trip. Now I know being vegan while traveling can be quite tricky. You might be in a country that isn't very familiar with veganism and so it might not have many options for you. And it might be especially tricky to be vegan on a ski trip when you're up in the mountains where there may not be many places to eat, let alone places that serve vegan food. In this video, I'm going to share a recent ski trip my friends and I went on in a place called Bansko in Bulgaria, which is about a two hour drive from Sofia airport. This trip was both budget friendly and also vegan friendly. Hopefully it will give you some ideas of how you can eat really well as a vegan, both on and off the slopes, without having to only eat bread and chips. We managed to keep this trip super cheap, so if you're on a budget and still want to ski, this video might also help you. And if you do like this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe as it really helps my channel out. We booked a four night stay in a gorgeous five bed chalet, which was about a 15 minute drive from Bansko Ski Resort. It was a lovely place which had a large open plan living room and kitchen, and it was nice and cozy, it had underfloor heating and even its own sauna room. We went to Bansko in late Feb in 2022. Before we arrived in Bulgaria, our hosts on Booking.com gave us an option to have our groceries delivered to our chalet on the day we arrived. We opted for this just for ease because one, our flight was an evening flight and Bulgaria are also two hours ahead of the UK. So by the time we reached our chalet, it was 6 a.m. And two, we didn't want to eat out every day to stay on a bit of a budget. If you have the option, I'd definitely recommend doing your food this way if you don't mind cooking a little and you're looking to save some money. My friends and I were a group of 10, so before ordering, we got organized. Out of the 10 of us, two of us were vegan. We teamed up into pairs and agreed to cook either a breakfast or lunch between each pair, so we kind of had a menu ready. We also brought Tupperware with us from home so that we could take whatever we made for our lunches up to the slopes and eat it there. Again, this is something that I definitely recommend doing. We each carried a little rucksack up to the slopes anyway, so popping a Tupperware in was no trouble at all. It also meant it saved us time having to find a restaurant and also ordering, and it meant we could eat at whatever time we wanted, wherever we wanted on the slopes. And it also meant that us vegans could eat really well without having to worry about any of the restaurants serving vegan food. For our dinners, we didn't really have much of a plan for them. We just kind of wanted to go with the flow and thought we could either eat out if we fancied it, order a takeaway, or just cook again, depending on how we felt each day. Surprisingly, we did actually stick to most of our menu and also cooking together was actually really lovely in the chalet. It was a really nice environment to cook together. It was open plan, so we could all chat, drink, cook, and just have a good time together. When we finally reached the chalet at 6 a.m., we were so impressed with the shop. We got loads of fresh fruit and veg, including tomatoes, mushrooms, avocados, and there were loads of vegan bits too, including hazelnut oat milk and vegan cheese. We didn't understand Bulgarian, obviously, so my friend who did the grocery shop did so by Google translating everything. So our quantities did end up being a little bit off. So for example, we wanted to order about 10 bulbs of garlic, but instead we managed to order about 10 packets of garlic, which each had multiple bulbs inside. So we ended up with about 70 bulbs of garlic. We also managed to get about 40 bags of crisps, thinking they'd be the small 30 gram packets, and we could each have a packet a day. Instead, we ended up with 40 bags of those huge sharing bags. So yeah, we had a lot of crisps to get through. Moral of the story, if you do decide to buy your food locally and online, maybe just double check the quantities as they may differ from how supermarkets in your country sell things. Our shop came to about £30 or $40 per person, 
which was amazing considering it was for two meals a day for four days with snacks and possibly a couple of dinners too for 10 people. We landed on a Friday at about 4 a.m. And so we got to the chalet about 6 a.m. So that day we got a little bit of sleep and then my friends got started on some brunch late morning. They made these lovely breakfast burritos, which were absolutely delicious. So they mashed up some avocado and chopped up some red onion to make a lovely guac with some fresh salsa using tomatoes, onions and parsley, some black beans, boiled rice and optional cheese. And we just folded it all into some tortilla wraps. These burritos were a great idea and made a lovely start to the day. I also made a coffee and had a choice of vegan milk. So we had Alpro oat, coconut milk, and even hazelnut milk. We also made a big fruit salad made of oranges, pears, apples, and banana, which kept us fueled too. So we were nice and full and we wanted to make the most of that day. So decided to go and get all our ski gear sorted and just get a little bit of practice as some of the group had never skied before. We loaded up with some snacks and off we went to hit the slopes. This day on the slopes was super fun, but for some of us, it was a little bit traumatic while we were still finding our feet. Quite literally. And for some of us, it was just a normal dreamy day gliding down the mountain. After a few hours of practicing on the slopes that day, we headed back to our chalet in the evening. For dinner that day, we did actually plan on getting a takeaway. We had some local takeaway brochures in the chalet, but after looking at our vegan options, my friend and I thought it was quite limited. In the end, my friends decided to make a shakshuka. Obviously this dish usually has egg in, so for the vegans, they made it with roasted aubergine and red pepper instead. We had the shakshuka with some sliced bread too, and it was a yummy, warming, healthy dinner. We also made some potato wedges with a few of the potatoes that we had, as well as some garlic mushrooms. We also had some salsa left over from the burritos, which we had for brunch. So we finished that off too, along with some of the spare rice that we had. After dinner, I had a bit of dark chocolate too that we'd bought, which was vegan and it was yummy. Later on that evening, while we were all just chilling in the chalet and chatting, a couple of my friends decided to make breakfast for the next morning. So the next day was a Saturday, so we planned to do as much skiing as we could that day and be out of the chalet by 8 a.m. So they made baked oats for us, which I thought was a great idea. They made two different versions, one vegan and one non-vegan. I think the difference was that the non-vegan one contained whey protein powder. They made the mixture mainly from oats, banana, some chocolate, peanut butter, and then they popped the mixture in the oven to bake. The whole chalet smelled so good after this. Once they'd baked, they then cut them into pieces, covered them lightly, and let them cool overnight. They turned out amazing and they were great for keeping our energy levels up. I wrapped mine up in foil and took it up to the slopes with me to snack on. And then we were off again, day two on the slopes. For lunch, my friends had made a load of sandwiches, which I forgot to take a picture of, but they made an assembly line forming sandwiches that were filled with peanut butter and banana for vegans and cheese salad for the non-vegans. Again, we just wrapped these up and took them up with us. So we had something to eat for lunch. And obviously it goes without saying, we also took our crisps with us because we had enough to get through and lots of fruit and snacks. Wave. This day was amazing, the weather was perfect and we'd all improved massively on our skiing and could all ski this day.
photo shoot. <laughs> Me and the gal. <laughs> Me and the gal them. The gal them. After a long morning and afternoon on the slopes, we then headed for a drink at a local place by the slopes. Later, we headed home back to the chalet to get a little bit freshened up and then we headed to dinner. Now, my friend who organized the trip had been to Bansko a few times before and recommended this restaurant called Victoria Restaurant. On the menu, there were actually a fair few vegan things that me and my friend could order. So we decided to order a few little plates. We ordered a aubergine dip, which came with walnuts on top and some nice crusty white bread. This was absolutely delicious. We also ordered a salad, which had sun-dried tomatoes, lettuce, avocado, cucumber and rocket. And this was also amazing. I don't know what they did to it, but the dressing was delicious. Then we also got some fried courgette, which was basically just pieces of courgette battered and then fried, which were really, really good actually. We also got some really nice roast potatoes. Some sweet corn or corn on the cob. And we also ordered these spinach croquettes, which we asked if they were bound with egg and the waiter said that they weren't. So we ordered them. They did come with an egg on the side, um, which we just gave to our friends instead of wasting it. But this dish was really, really nice as well. And as if we hadn't ordered enough, we also ordered some grilled veg, which was made up of onions, peppers and mushrooms and carrots, I think. So yeah, we ended up with a lot of food, but it was absolutely delicious. We were really happy and really full by the end as well. Then we just drove back to the chalet, had a few drinks and just relaxed. While we were at dinner, it had started to snow quite heavily. The next morning, the snow still hadn't stopped. It had been going all evening and the snow was really, really deep, but it looked absolutely stunning. The next day it was mine and my partner's turn to make breakfast, so we decided to make a avocado on toast kind of thing with some tomatoes and mushrooms. So with the avocado we just mashed it up and seasoned it, we chopped up the tomatoes and mixed them with parsley and then we also made some garlic mushrooms. The non-vegans also had some egg as well. And we had some little bits on the side like jalapenos and also some blueberries and fresh fruit. Again, I had a cup of coffee that day and also while we were making breakfast, one of my friends decided to make lunch for us to take up on the slopes with us. So she'd actually brought some giant couscous from home, a bag of that, and we had some leftover shakshuka mix so she decided to just mix the two together add in some greens which we could just put in a tortilla wrap or some of us just put it in our tupperware so like i said it was super snowy this day and the conditions were a little bit more tough than usual. So half of the group decided to go up to the slopes and just check out the conditions to see how it was. And half of the group decided to take it a little bit slower, hang out a little bit in the chalet before hitting the slopes. Go team, go. Uh. 
So some of us were making use of their time on the slopes and some of us were taking our time. <laughs> Eventually, late morning, we did all make it to the slopes and the conditions were pretty tricky, but it was still super fun. We did have a few team building exercises along the way. It did take us about two hours to get home that day because the roads were super congested because of all the snow. Luckily, we did make it home okay and the car that got home first started on dinner, which was a lovely chickpea curry that was bubbling away and another vegetable curry where we just whacked in all the spare veg that we had to try and finish it off and not waste anything. We also had some spare jalapenos, celery, giant couscous, onions, so my friend just whacked it all into a huge salad bowl and dressed it really nicely and it was so tasty. And dinner was served, so it was a chickpea and sweet corn curry with the salad that I mentioned earlier. We also had some spare wraps and we also had a veg curry. We had some spare rice as well, so we boiled that. And it was basically just whatever we had in the fridge left over. And my other vegan friend had a really good idea to melt some of the vegan chocolate with an espresso shot and add some milk in to make a vegan hot chocolate, which was delicious. And then the dessert queen among us had just happened to rustle up a apple crumble, which wasn't vegan, but it looked incredible and smelled amazing. And for the vegan dessert, we just chopped up some banana, melted some chocolate and chopped up some nuts to go on top. And then we just popped it in the freezer. This turned out really nice. It was super, super tasty. And then to get rid of some of the pears, my friend also just poached them. So I just boiled them in some water and they turned out really, really nice. And now we're on to the Monday, which was our final day. We did have enough time to ski, but we had to get out quite quickly. So for breakfast, we kind of just grabbed what we could see. And that was mainly a little bit of fruit and obviously some of the crisp packets that we had left. So on this day, half of us decided to go and hit the slopes for one last time. And some of the group decided to head to the spa, which was down the road to get some massages and just generally relax. The slopes were absolutely divine this day. It was a Monday, so a lot less busy than the weekend. And we pretty much had the slopes to ourselves. So it was super peaceful and super relaxing. And that's it, that was our last day on the slopes. After this, we made our way back to the chalet. Then that day for food, we kind of just ate what was around. Loads of the snacks, loads of the fruit. There was some bread left, some cheese. So we just kind of nibbled on that. And then we packed our bags and headed for the airport. If you're not looking to do a self-catering ski trip, I have seen that there are vegan ski chalets popping up now that serve vegan food and completely cater for vegans. So have a little Google and check those out too. It might be a bit more pricey to do it this way, but it might be quite fun to try. If you are looking to do it our way, some of my top tips would be to take a food storage container with you so that you can keep food on you. I've also seen people take thermoses up so that you can carry hot stews or soups too. You also might want to bring a few spices and things from home so you don't have to buy them. So for example, with the shakshuka, my friends bought a lot of the spices from home so that we didn't add them to the shop. Also, don't forget to bring a rucksack so that you can carry any vegan snacks or fruit up to the top with you. 
And finally, it helps to have a really good bunch of open-minded friends or family who support your veganism, so you don't feel like you're being the awkward one. I hope this video has helped you and given you a few ideas of how you can do a ski trip whilst being vegan. I'll see you again soon.